Hello people of the internet. I'm joined today by my good boy here Marty and behind us we've got my latest vehicle purchase. So you might notice that the car is currently under a car cover. Now it's not because it's a big reveal or anything, it's because it's sitting under a bottle brush tree that drops a ton of leaves every day and it's also out here in the less than average weather. So let's take the cover off and have a quick look at the car. The vehicle that I've just bought is a 2012 Alfa Romeo Giulietta QV powered by a 1.75 litre turbo petrol engine making 240 horsepower and 340 newton meters. The Alfa Romeo Giulietta was first introduced in the mid 1950s as a compact passenger coupe. Six years later the 100,000th Giulietta was produced which was a major milestone for Alfa Romeo as they mainly focused on their racing cars selling passenger cars only to fund the racing development. The model that I've got here today is the third iteration of the name, staying true to the original vehicle as a passenger car, coming second only as a sports car. Now the first step for any car I buy is to get down and detail it, and this car is absolutely filthy. So what is this car like to drive? Um, let's start off by saying that it's got three driving modes. It's got dynamic, normal, and all weather. Now basically what that does is dynamic is supposed to tighten the steering and give you more response and feel. Normal is, as it sounds, just normal everyday driving mode, so the steering starts to loosen up a bit and become more, becomes better for city driving, you know, where you have to do tight turns and maneuvers at low speed. This is a peppy car. Power comes on at 2000 RPM and stays on until about five and a half. <clears throat> Maybe even just five, but it's got a lot of power and it's low weight. 1320 kilograms curb weight, which is really low for a new car. So that makes for a very fun, compelling package. But what I've found is maybe it's because the brakes need to be replaced, but sometimes there's just a bit of instability, especially when you're cornering. Road holding ability, not that comes down to the tires, not that comes down to suspension. It's very good in this car, but it there is just a point where the stability of the car, the control, just disappears for some odd reason. So it talks steers to the right and sometimes when you're cornering it oversteers and wants to pull it into the corner, which is a bit unsettling. Maybe that's how it's how inside to drive. Engine light I've got here. 
But once we get home, we'll plug in an OBD2 scanner into the port, wherever that is, and we'll check out what the CL's for and maybe even clear it. So you might be wondering why I went for an Alfa Romeo when it's so out of character for someone like me. Well our story begins two years ago when I was looking for something cheap and sporty and I ended up coming across a Nissan Stager that was only $2000 and for that price it just couldn't be beaten being factory turbo, all wheel drive and JDM. However that Stager wasn't without its issues and it was a rigmarole of trying to fix it only to have another issue pop up instantly right after and usually a big one at that. When the time came to sell it I had a buyer coming to meet me at a specific time and place but after two hours of waiting I figured enough was enough I'm just going to take the car to a local dealership and get a quote and see how much they would give me for it. However that quote was too low and upon returning home I found a flurry of angry messages and threats coming from this potential buyer four hours later which pretty much was the start of me getting put off which you can see as why I wasn't very active on YouTube or Instagram anymore. After that because the Stadia was a big heavy car weighing about 1.7 tons and not having the handling characteristics of a small nimble car I wanted something that was exactly that small and nimble so on marketplace I came across an FX GT AE 101 5 speed manual 20 valve 4 AGE that was a blast to drive I thoroughly enjoyed driving it across the country to get it home however once I finally did get it home I found that the lowered suspension was actually a drawback and I couldn't actually get it up the driveway to get it back home. Now that car also had some mechanical issues that I was going to work out but because I couldn't get into the garage, couldn't get it home, I had to sell it off. Now I had a buyer for that car which he seemed to be a 4AGE fan I guess and he agreed to meet me at a specific time and place again but he was an hour late and being in the middle of winter that was after dark he didn't even test drive the car barely looked at it I explained the mechanical issues to him now a week later he was calling me constantly hassling me about the car saying that I need to give him a refund I told him it's fine as long as he returns the car but he refused to return the vehicle so it just became a massive hassle where he started to get threatening where basically he just wanted the car for free which that wasn't going to happen so I explained to him all the mechanical issues now because of this buyer and because of the previous potential buyer that just put me off enthusiast and sports cars for a while so I just wanted something basic, normal something that flies under a radar which no one really notices which is when I ended up buying that ZRE 154 Corolla now it was great for what it does you can put the bicycle in the back you can take it to the beach you can thrash it around a bit and with a set of tires it actually did handle all right but it wasn't perfect so it did weigh quite a bit for a car that size it was a bit bigger than what I'm used to and it wasn't especially fun didn't have much power but with a good set of tires you could throw it around the corners but you'd experience some bad understeer while doing so now on a recent vacation I had the opportunity to drive a few cool cars such as a Honda S2000 and that made me really want to get back into a sports car again so I decided to look at Marketplace S2000s and found they were just outside my budget I looked at the next best thing which is a GT86 again you aren't really getting that much of a deal from a GT86 paying the prices you're asking and it was actually from a game that I played about 10 years ago that I really liked the Alfa Romeo Giulietta so I just had a quick look online and found that there was one for sale that was actually within my price range. I was very interested in that car but then a friend of a friend was selling off his car which seemed like a very good deal because it was even cheaper and you're getting the same vehicle. So I sold off the Corolla last week and ended up buying the Alfa Romeo Giulietta QV over the weekend. So now that I've covered all the basics and expressed what I think about the car, what is my overall end game? Well, nothing really. I'm just going to drive it daily and weekend it sometimes. 
but there will be a few upgrades such as replacing the rotors on the brakes with some slotted rotors and getting some better tires. So that's all and I hope you enjoyed watching.